When the Spanish Empire was busy colonizing a majority of the New World, they also took the island then known as Isla Juana. But empires come and empires fall, and in the 1800s, Cuba and Puerto Rico was all Spain had left, which was promptly lost to America during the Spanish-American War. America had a rather large strategic interest in Cuba, even as far back as the 1820s when former President Thomas Jefferson stated that America ought at the first possible opportunity to take Cuba. In 1898, Cuba was in the middle of a second revolution, because the first one didn't work out so well. The tension was high. The U.S., in response, sent the USS Maine to protect American interests, which exploded in Havana Harbor, and the American people promptly blamed Spain. Whatever, or whoever, caused the explosion wasn't clear, and it's just a fact that is lost to history. But, remember the Maine, to hell with Spain. And with overwhelming public support for war, that is exactly what they got. And less than four months later, Spain surrendered. Spain gave Guam, the Philippines, and Puerto Rico to the United States, while Cuba was granted independence under a U.S. protectorate, which gave the U.S. complete military, economic, and political control. The island was de facto American. Before the war started, there was a lot of political lobbying to prevent Cuba from becoming a state, notably Henry Teller who got the Teller Amendment signed into law which stated that the U.S. would not annex the island and only serve as protection until the need was no longer there. Now, Henry Teller and the other lobbyists had a personal interest in Cuba being independent. They didn't want valuable Cuban sugar to compete with sugar crops in America and the newly acquired Hawaiian Islands. The protection ended four years later and the U.S. withdrew its military occupation of the island, mostly, but kept the U.S. naval base of Guantanamo Bay, which Cuba and the U.S. agreed was necessary to maintain Cuban independence. But then things got a bit complicated when the Cubans decided to go for a third revolution, this time with a communist flair. The new government claimed the naval base to be illegal and demanded the U.S. leave, which the U.S. told Cuba to go suck it. So America doesn't own Cuba because of political lobbying, but perhaps it would have been better to have ignored them and just annexed the land. Because, law of unintended consequences, the Cuban Missile Crisis, which almost led to a nuclear war between the United States and the Soviet Union, would have never happened. One man's uncompetitive sugar plantation is another man's nuclear holocaust. Cost. 